Good morning, uh, Mr. Japon. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the Assassin Breakfast Show. Yeah, good morning. I trust you're well. Uh, pretty good. I'm fine. Great. Um, let's start off. Um, you've had quite a long period in Parliament. Um, so you've seen the fifth, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh and now the 8th Parliament of the 4th Republic. How does this compare to the previous? Well, uh, today, the way we're handling Parliament is like we're in Makola. You know, there's no decorum over there. Every second, we want to fight. Uh, when we took over, or when we went to Parliament in 2001, Although we disagreed on certain issues, <clears throat> it never go to that. There's my system in Parliament. Mm -hmm. I haven't experienced anything like this before for all the five terms except this one. And it's all because the numbers are close. And in actual fact, you don't even know who is... Uh, who is in majority, except when you are, are the independent candidate to it. So it's been a big problem. And it's not interesting at all what is happening in parliament. But that is democracy. That's the situation we find ourselves in. And therefore, we have to make the best out of it. So in short, I will say that all the systems, this is the worst. You know, when I'm going to parliament, I don't even have the zeal. And nothing is being done over there because we don't understand each other. When it happens like that, uh, there's a proverb that says, when two elephants fight, it's the earth yeah. that well, suffers yeah. or the grass that suffers. That is exactly what is happening. Because majority and minority are fighting and also in disagreement, the country is suffering. Mm. So it's about time we speak the truth and make sure we move this country. In 2024, whoever wins, so be it. But as it is today, MPP is still in power and therefore I will entreat my brothers in opposition to compromise. At the same time, the government should also compromise. You cannot be on the defensive all the time. If you do that and there's no compromise, there'll be no peace and that will derail development. So I'm entreating both sides that we need to come together in the name of the country and move things forward. That's what I'll say. Well, thanks. Uh, very, very sound opening <clears throat> statements. Um, you're very vocal, um, never shying away from controversy. And, um, but on the night of the election of the speaker, you were sitting quietly minding your business. It, it's something that <laughs> we couldn't help but notice. Well, <laughs> you know, um, when I was 30, 40, mm -hmm. even 45, 50, mm -hmm. I would do that. I would also be shouting across it. But six years, uh, six times in parliament, uh, I've seen it all. I've seen it all, and therefore, I didn't want to get involved, you know, over 60. I left it to the young ones, and I was observing what was going on, you know. So, when you are young, you do things differently. When you are old, you also do things differently. And it's a different perspective with the two ages, mm -hmm. the youth and the grown-up. That's right. You know, the way you have the youthful exuberance and react to issues. 
when we are growing, you see that, look, and because you've had experience from your youthful age, you say that this will come to pass. So we should relax. So experience has taught us mm. that you know, what you did when you were young, you need to improve on it when you are old. And it all, all these decisions will come based on your experience, your previous experience. That is why I sat quietly and watched them. My reason, honestly, I'll be frank and brutal, why I decided not to say anything was that. It's like whatever was happening has vindicated Kenny Japan. How? Yeah, because I went round during the campaign pleading with MPP people. Now look, no matter the situation, Let's come together and do party work or vote for MPP. They said most places where there were problems said to me that we will vote for a Kufuadu, but we will not vote for our MP. What they normally call skirt and blouse. That's right. And that is exactly what happened. So all the advice that I gave them and they didn't take it came to pass. January 6th. So I was just looking at them. Like, well, I told you so. You didn't. And even at the National Executive Committee, before we moved in, I hinted them. Now look, this is the intel I have that NDC will go there very early to occupy the majority seat. And some top MPP gurus will say, oh, there's no hung parliament. Oh, they can't do that. So I kept quiet. When we entered, they were seated, the majority side. And I support that action, not the fight, but taking majority seats, NDC taking majority seats. I support them. Why do you support that? Yeah, my brother, you have 137, I have 137. Until the independent candidate decides to join one political party. You cannot say you are majority. So if they go and occupy the majority seat, they are 137. They are 137. So first come, first serve. Case closed. That is exactly what happened. That is why I support them. So I just kept quiet mm. and watched things to unfold because it's like I told you so. Did you, in your rounds and uh, admonishment and warning to the party, um, you know, uh, hierarchy, uh, mention anything about the Formina situation? Because one would say that what we have in Parliament was because the MP I, for... I, I went there myself. Mm -hmm. I went there to talk to them. And I spoke to the independent candidate first mm -hmm. because I like him. Then, of course, I have to do party work. So I went to campaign for the MPP candidate. But when I went there, I chose my words carefully. I didn't want to infuriate passions because my underground work clearly indicates that the people were not going to budge unless we bring the independent candidate or the former MP of the unit back. So I chose my words carefully. At a point, one of the speakers was trying to diss the MP. I went there and whispered to him that you should cut it and come and sit down. We make him peace here so you cannot go and insult the MP. And they told the MP all the things I said. Apparently, he had his men there. Mm. And because of the way I spoke, when he won, I called him. And he pleaded with me, even before he went to pick the nomination forms. I called him, and he knelt before me and said, Senior, the way I like you and respect you, 
that if you push me to stop, we'll lose the seat. And I assure you that I'm going to win the seat. So please, allow me. By the way, he spoke to me. He said, well, that if that's your decision, fine. Okay? So I had to do that. And now let me tell you, let me tell you, for him to come to our party and join us, I paid one million CDs. Check. Edward Boateng is my witness that I paid to the former chairman to step down as a chairman because the condition he gave us was that so long as we have the MPP chairman there as chairman, he's never going to join MPP party. Which chairman are you referring to? The former chairman. Oh, the, the constituency chairman. chairman yes. Okay. So I had to call the former chairman and say, look, well, for the sake of the party, I'll do it. But I also owe some banks. He showed it to me. He was owing a bank. I said, okay, for peace, I gave a check of one million. You can call him and ask him. That's how come he resigned. People don't know what we do behind the scenes to move this party. Before you come to your next question, let me chip in this. Yesterday, I read, I don't know how far is, is the truth or is true. Dr. Mwakuba was saying that President Akufuado has not treated Ajua Safu well. The party has not treated Ajua Safu well. I respect Dr. Mwakuba very well. So I want to inform him quietly and nicely. I will not insult, I will not do anything. But to let him know that there are fine gentlemen and women in the party that have made several efforts to talk to Ajua. First is the president himself. I don't know why he has a soft spot for Ajua Safu. Two is the chief of staff. Three is Honorable Che Menza and myself. Dr. Mwakuba, <clears throat> what the treatment Ajua Safu is giving to MPP today, if you think Ajua Safu's seat is declared vacant, we are going to lose. We've already lost again. Already. We've lost because the woman is in the name of MPP, but mm -hmm. she doesn't come to parliament. <clears throat> and now let me tell you the true sons and daughters of MPP how we behave and think MPP doesn't belong to my family it's not inheritance mm -hmm. we all collectively believing in one ideology join the party so one person cannot impose his or her will on the party that this is the only thing that will make me join the party or do what you want me to do. It is completely wrong. What is there that can't be <clears throat> You know what? Resolved? I did, I will answer you. Okay. I did a surgery. I was recovering. I spoke to Chief of Staff and said, look, rest before you come. This same woman who said I should rest made a call through Honorable Esiama that, look, there's E-Levy going on and we have a problem. So we need you. Although I said you should rest, we need your vote. And listen carefully. He said, Honorable Esiama told me, look, my brother, I was supposed to, I flew first class with Emirates. But Honorable Esiama, because they needed me, Say, look, we're going to hire private jet to come and pick you people up. Ajua Safo, myself, Honorable Henry Corte, and Doc, uh, Honorable Amwakwata. What I said to the minister, please, I don't want my name anywhere. You, any flight, because mine was going to be Monday and they didn't need a vote on Friday. 
So the Thursday, I said, any flight you get for me, I'll come. I don't want any private jet. Henry Cote drove from Philadelphia. Dr. Mwakuba, should you listen carefully? All the efforts, everybody has made a commitment that we've all made. Henry Cote drove from Philadelphia to New York, Kennedy Airport. Honorable Amwakota flew from um, Minnesota to New York Airport. I drove from New Jersey to New York. I drove Boston. Dr. Amwakota, eh, Amwakuba, what do you know? I drove to refuse to come. And MPP people should listen carefully. Ajua Safu, they hired a private jet to bring the woman here. And when she came, she refused to come to parliament. So who was in parliament casting the vote that day? Hold well, well on. Okay. She refused to come to parliament. Chief of staff, after buying the ticket and flying her in, had to take a motorcade to Ajua's house. She stood behind her, her gate for 30 minutes. What kind of rudeness is that? Before she opened, chief of staff was made to sit at her living room for 35 minutes. When she came, Babi was tired. She is sick. He's sick. He can't wait. If you can't get your numbers, so be it. And we couldn't vote. Going back, she was demanding another private jet. Excuse me. Ah, Dr. Mwakuba, I'm sorry. Please. You don't know what has transpired. Look, about three weeks ago, we went to um, Kwau, Rock something. Rock City. Rock City. They put pressure on me to call Adwasaf. I placed the call through my daughter. Thirteen times. She refused to talk to me. She refused. What do you want us to do again? My daughter said to me that, oh, daddy, my birthday, I've not received my birthday present. She was born 27th December. I said, okay, put your mother on the line to give me account and I'll let my friend transfer the money. She refused to talk to me. I heard her. The girl was holding, mommy, daddy wants to talk to you. She refused to talk to me. A chief had traveled to where she is, just to convince her. She refused to come. Ah, Dr. Mwakuba, if we lose Kwabenya seat, we are already, we've already lost. By her behavior, we've lost. So if there's a by-election that we lose, we don't lose anything. Case closed. Look, I have two kids with her, so I'm very, very careful the way I go about things. Family issues are put aside. All what I'm telling you is political political efforts that we made. I applaud Dokua. Dokua had just delivered two weeks. She left the baby to come here. The second one, she came. Ajua says no. And now look at her conditions. Dr. Mwakuba, I respect you. Can I what, what, what are her conditions? Ajua now is saying that before she comes, Daniel should listen. Can I just, I'm not a madman just to go and talk. A Jewish condition is that you have to remove Alex Markin as deputy mini, uh, uh, deputy uh, majority deputy leader. leader. Yeah. Announce it that Alex Markin has been removed. Then she will take a plane and come here. Second one, another demand is that if you don't give me what I want, you are, you are not going to get the E-Levy passed. And if you don't pass the E-Levy, you go to IMF. So unless you give me what I want, I will never come. But apart from uh, her request to have uh, Alexander Fenyomarking removed as Deputy Majority Leader, what else is she asking for? That, that what I just told you, that I will not come... Unless it's announced that it's been removed. Right. And... The second one was that if I don't come, 
Levy, if you don't give me what I want, I will not come. E Levy will not be passed. If it doesn't pass, you go to IMF. Mm. I had gone there to Chief of Staff's office to plead on behalf of Ajua. And he said, my brother, please, don't go there. If you are saying A, B, C, D, I've just spoken to her. This is her demands. So I said, well, I've done my part. What would you think would <clears throat> account for her request for the removal of the deputy majority speaker? Well, maybe she's not happy as a minister for what? Gender. Maybe. And again, Dr. Bwakuma stated that because of Mrs. Kwashiga's age. I will tell you straight. You see, all those people born in Accra, Kumasi, in the cities, you should go back to your village and learn common sense and wisdom. See, you guys here yeah, born in Accra, Latojin babies, you take decisions anyhow. Go, go, go and stay with your grandmother, your grandfather in the village. You think, oh, we are village boy, this and that. But the common sense and the wisdom, the impact. Why I'm saying that is that. The school feeding coordinators, mm -hmm. listen carefully. When Adwa was made the president, uh, the minister, mm -hmm. they came to me. Oh, uh, you are, Adwa is your wife. Tell her to remove Mrs. Kwashiga because she doesn't pay us. She doesn't do this. One. Because of Asin Dumpim, wisdom, training, I did not listen to them, but I did investigation. And I realized that, look, these women that are complaining about Mrs. Kwashiga, they are rather inflating the schools. I can offer has agreed with uh, Swedro MP, what's the name? No, this is my friend. That look, this, these are the numbers you have to take. It should be within the budget. The women organizers, MPP women organizers, on their own authority. Is it Akim Swedro? Yeah, no, no. Aguna Swedro. Aguna Swedro, okay. Women organizers in the party. No, that's uh, a Canadian senior is Akim Swedro. We're looking no, no, Aguna, Aguna, Aguna Swedro. Aguna Swedro. A lady. It's a lady. Um, don't worry, I'll get the name. He's my friend. You know, so what happened was that Kenoforiata and the minister agreed that this is the number you can take. And some women organizers in our party mm -hmm. on their own authority gave some schools to some women and up to date, they've not been paid because it was not captured. So, they had gone to that they had gone to Mrs. Kwashiga to change the names uh, of the schools or put in more schools for them that he said no. Cynthia Morrison is the name you're looking Yeah, Cynthia. Uh, she should, today, what she will do to me? <laughs> so, uh, my good sister, I have a problem now. So these coordinators they were pushing the woman, and the woman said no. But you see, they made a U-turn, came and complained that I should convince Ajua to remove Mrs. Kwashiga, which I didn't do it. Unfortunately for her, she didn't listen or investigate. And within six months in office, you said that the coordinator should leave. And let me tell you straight. Let me tell you, I don't miss words. Me, in MPP, and you media people, the way you twist, I want to state it emphatically. And it should be reported as it is. Not twisting. Two things. Family matters, I will not discuss here because Ajua is good, taking care of my kids. Mm -hmm. But politically, I will choose Mrs. Kwashiga over Adwa any time. Any time, any day. Because we have to reward hard work, commitment to party. Those days that Kwashiga 
put his life on the line for NPP party. Where was Ajwazafu? And you come to office in six months, you write the letter without even consulting the president. You write a letter to sack the woman. The only thing the president got to know was that it was in the papers that Mrs. Koshika has been sacked. Ah, ah, ah. What is this? So if the president instructs you to reinstate the woman, Otikwapai, Dr. Mwakuma, we respect you. You are a very good man, a loyal party. But respectfully, before you also comment, you should investigate and ask questions. Before you go and put it out there, if we lose, so what? We've been in opposition before. Why are we being threatened all the time? You lose, you lose, you lose. So do you consider that a threat? Yeah, of course. That if you make a mistake and remove Ajuasafu. I want to tell Dr. Mwakuba that Ajuasafu is in parliament in the name of MPP, but we are in opposition. So if we lose, we go to by election and lose. It doesn't make a difference, I tell you. For the way the girl or the woman is treating MPP party. Look, we all have problems in the party. Me, let me tell you. All the sacrifices I've made, with the exception of the judge that I was annoyed, they wanted to take my land and I insulted them. Every court case that I have in this country is because of MPP. But nobody in MPP has even asked, oh, how is the court case? You clearly have a heart for the new patriotic party. Uh, you've called for compromise on the part of the NPP um, because the numbers really, uh, and you don't have a clear majority in parliament. Yeah. How do you propose this compromise is achieved? You know, we all have to put our grievances behind us. Just as I told you that I also have problems in the party. Me, I'm a businessman. The way I run my mouth to defend MPP, if I want a contract, I beg like a kid. Read my lips. Really? I beg, yes. I beg like a kid in MPP before they give me something. And when, is, when you go there for 100, they'll give you peace me, 20. I look at them and I say, Lord, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. But we are still surviving. It's not rosy as you, you see it out there. We all have problems, but party first. But party first. So if you think you have a problem and the way you are going to operate is to sabotage the party. Now, you are asking to, for the president to remove the deputy majority leader for you to be a deputy majority leader. Mm -hmm. I will also go back to America and tell President Kufuado, resign before I come. Yeah. If President Kufuado should yield to Ajua's demand, I'll also go to America. Then I'll make phone call to Chief of Staff. Well, tell President Kufuado to resign before I come back. Somebody will look at me, Canada Japan. He talked too much. Okay, I'm also not coming to parliament. What precedents are we setting in this party? So please, we have to be truthful. I have kids there, but it's gotten to this point. And this, as you say, purely is a long political life. Political. It has nothing to do with your no. personal relationship no. with her. No, this is political. Right. I think she's wrong. She should rather apologize to the party. They should stop begging her. They should stop begging her. Do you support the cause for her removal? Yes. Yeah, but the foundation of Blade clearly tells you that I support for her removal if she doesn't come and so, sit there and make demands. Prophet, Dr. Mwakuba, what do you know? 
When she refused to pick my call for 13 times, I tried Sunday, she refused. Wednesday, she sends her PA, calls me, and Adra says, if you can help uh, our son's bill. I said, but when I wanted to talk to her, she did not even pay you. Ever since you've been her PA, have you heard that I have argued with Adra even one day? He said, no. So why did she place the call to you and not me? I'm not going to give her a dime. And Dr. Mwakuba, listen to me here. I, mean, I don't like people like that, honestly. I have vowed not to insult. I can never blast the beer. I grew up. I grew up. Chief of staff called me. I went there. Said, now this is what she's saying. I swear my mother's grill. Chief of staff gave me 120000 Deposited in a Joseph's Fidelity Bank account. Please, I'm Wakuba. What do you know? So it, ah, a lot why? has been done. Yes, yes, I'm telling you. I put the money there in the Fidelity account. Ask her PA if what I'm saying is not the truth. Ah, well, now we are in opposition. The way Adria is treating the party is clearly showing that we are in opposition. And this shouldn't be tolerated at all. You know, the, 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 the conversation about her position would not be of um, great significance, for the lack of a better expression, if there was a clear majority in, in parliament. And this has become even more in sharp focus because of the e-levy. I'd like your thoughts on the e-levy bill itself. You know, my e-levy, I support e-levy fully. Because it's about time black man takes his destiny into his own hands. Black people should stop begging white people to feed themselves. We've been in classrooms with them. Fordham University is a pure white university. About 5% minority. 95% white. But we all receive awards. It clearly tells you that if you think the way they think, you will be a superior being. So, with this pandemic, that the whole world is suffering from it, who is going to take his taxes and give it to you? Who? So, we have to be independent by collecting these small, small taxes here and there so that we can also run the economy. But if I hear some people argue that we should go to IMF, any government that goes to IMF has failed. And we haven't failed for the good works that we have done in this country. You should applaud Kenno Foriata. He's not well, but still, yesterday I heard them in war or in the name of the country. Ah, please. Now let me explain the e-levy to you. I think there is a problem, because yesterday I was listening to a sempa, and a japa stress 100 CDs, you pay 150. You're referring to a japa mesa. Yes. Japa mesa. Okay. And yesterday, at GBC, the workers there, some were telling me that, you know, our people don't explain the e levy well to the masses. Which I disagree because it's like they've been polluted and they don't want to know. But let me take this opportunity to explain. Look, the hand, if you are sending 200 CDs to your mother, first 100 CDs is zero tax. The second 100 CDs, you will pay one CD 50 pesos. So if you are sending 300, you are not going to pay four CDs, 50 pesos. You will pay three CDs because the first 100 is free. Ghanaians should get it clear that the first 100 is free. The second 100, making 200 that we are sending, you pay one CD, 50 pesos. So if you are sending 300, you will pay three CDs, 50 pesos. If you are sending 400, you pay four CDs, 50 pesos, instead of six CDs, because the first 100 is free. 
kind of phone TN here. We have to listen carefully because maybe they are refusing to accept or we don't communicate well. The first 100 CDs you send is free. Now let me tell you, after that. the mode of transaction business of late is on our mobile phones everywhere in the world. So what America now is doing is that they call something cash up. The cash up, the first $500 is free. If you send $600, the $100 is taxable. They deduct. Now, they call something structuring. Within 24 hours, if you want to beat the system, for instance, I want to send $1,000 to you. Today, I'll send 500 Then tomorrow, another 500 Then tomorrow, another 500 When you send 500 today, and within 24 hours, you send another 500 it is called structuring. You are trying to beat the system. So immediately, it triggers to IRS. They report you to IRS. IRS will not come after you, but at the end of the year, there's a printout to you, mm -hmm. to go and file your tax. But this is the business transaction you did on your mobile. Some friends are saying that you don't have to compare America. Why not? America, the richest nation on earth, even is applying some form of e-levy. How much more a poor country like Ghana? So surprisingly, we want to know, I know they do corporate social responsibility, I don't doubt that. This telcos. They are charging two CDs. And Guineans don't find any problem with it, my brother. But when it comes to 1.5, Guineans have a problem. These same people are asking, <laughs> look at uh, Honorable Samsei, asking for new rules for Bodhi. Where are we going to get the money? It's all part of it. But at 6.8 billion CDs a year, is that what we need to, 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 to um, My brother, really shore it's, up the It's economy? an added on. Okay, it's better than nothing because 8 billion CDs. If you go to IMF, NDC people went to IMF for 1 billion. They structured this 330 million a year. And look at the restrictions they gave them. So in three years, going to IMF for one billion, in three years, one hundred uh, three hundred and thirty million a year, three times, getting you to one billion. This one will give you one billion times three, which is three billion dollars. Some, at, some look, at, look at the difference. Yeah, so, some have argued that uh, the way the e-levy debate is being looked at is largely because it's as though we're pouring money into um, a container, a bucket that has holes in it. My brother, my brother, yesterday I listened to one presenter, 92.7, and I was sad. I got so furious before I got to uh, GBC studio. I was so annoyed. But democracy, we have to entertain everybody. My brother, let me tell you, under MPP government, the development that has gone on these five years is unprecedented. Look at the road being constructed everywhere. Look at factories coming up. Look at school feeding or free SHS. Look at development. Businesses springing up under MPP government. How can you say it's a, a, a basket that you pour water into it and it's leaking? Well, I mean, at the end at of least, the year... We show for whatever we've done or whatever money we took. Let, let me tell you, until the gentleman sitting here is an eyewitness to an incident that happened on Friday 
a cousin of mine, he left on Thursday to Asim Fusu, and he complained of headache. The next day, he called them early morning to take him to hospital, which they did. When they checked the pressure, it was 215 over 133. That's very high. Yes. So they had to refer him to Ridge Hospital, Fusu. And a Kufuadu's ambulance from 215 over 133, the nurse plus the ambulance operators, the equipment in that ambulance, when they got to Ridge Hospital, his pressure had dropped from 105 to 98. These same NDC people that are making noise, very dishonest people, bought these empty ambulances at $70,000. Empty. We were in Parliament. They brought it to Parliament House. That's where they came to pack it. Is that what we are seeing today? So in short, what I want to tell you is that value for money, MPP is always better than NDC. Let's go back to President Kufo's time. And we see how Ghanaians forget so soon. Either we are ungrateful or we don't even see or understand what development is. NDC were bragging with the E-blocks. They did only 28. 16 of them funded by World Bank. Kufo, we're talking of E block. Yeah, There's only yeah. one structure. That's right. Kufua built 52, 52, Ghanaian should listen, 52 model schools. If I don't know at all, Chufu Praso was one of them because it's next to my constituents. 52. Administration block and everything. They shifted them from wherever they are, a new location. And you need to see 52. NDC proclaimed to be socialist party. They are just chop chop. That is why Ghanaians believe that NPP is also going to do chop chop. And because of the way they believe and understand governance is chop chop, they inculcate that into Ghanaians and they believe. Why I say chop chop is that? Where on earth? You are blaming Baumia. When this interoperability uh, at the Bank of Ghana and the rest, NDC gave a contract for $1.2 billion. And Bawomia did it $4.5 million. Ah, Ghanaians, please give me a break here. We've forgotten so soon. We've forgotten so soon. Look, let me show you. Because it's there, now you don't see the importance of it. But the ideas, the vision of a leader. Look, under Kufu, we had moving pick. Under Kufu, we had Kempiski. Under Kufu, we had a Golden Tulip renovated. Takradi. It was given to Western Diamonds before we came and all those things. You have a holiday in. All came under Kufu. NDC in eight years. With our Tamils praising or singing, Minyanum, Awala Nyimze, Amamazi, Miyam Sumfo, and Ameba, Petru Metodo, boom, 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 boom. What did we see? But when it comes to petrol, um, the president, Nanado Dankwa Kufuado, also said that it was going to drop prices. Yes. But yeah. let, me, let me tell it didn't you. didn't happen. Let me tell you. A Kufuado took over in 2017. When did you experience COVID? 2019. Well, oh. 2020 March. 2020 March. So he didn't even finish the first term. He didn't even finish the first term. I'm drawing your attention to something. That NDC government, anytime you have NDC government, the global economy performance favors NDC. 
any time MPP comes to power, the global economic performance do not favor MPP. You know why? I'll give you an example. You've forgotten. In 1998, that was the time that the CD depreciated about 150%. 1998. Oh, yeah, we had, I think, about 28% of inflation at the time. Good. The, do you know how much crude oil price was? $20.63. President Kufu's time, in May 2008, it was 147 In June 2008, it's for 179.9 cents per barrel. Immediately that we lost power, it dropped to 67. I also ask you the same question. Did data mills reduce fuel prices? <laughs> when it dropped from 180 or 17, <laughs> I have to be specific. Yeah. It was 179.9. Mm -hmm. Immediately they took over. Fuel prices came to 67. I'm a metro, boom, boom, boom. Did you see that? So, in, in essence, if both Atamils and uh, Akufu, 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 I don't say they're going to, the price of petrol is not something that can be made political. Yes, I agree with you perfectly. Yeah. I agree with you. So, we, so we can't be using those. I mean, I get the point you're raising. Um, so even today, when I was coming. Yeah. Brent crude is $97. Inching closer to 100 Good. And America has predicted in 40 years, inflation has not risen to 7.5%. But because of COVID and because of the money that Trump printed, trillions of dollars into it. I agree with him. I'm not condemning Trump because he needed money for the country. They printed the money. Now, inflation, American history, 40 years, is 7.5. Europe, inflation was 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Now, European Union is 4.68. Do you know what inflation does? What are your thoughts on it? You know, so what I'm saying is that globally, all nations are suffering. Prices of items have gone up. A price, uh, an item that I was paying $12 in America today in 2020 is now $21. The prices have gone up. Yes. It's a global because phenomenon. Of, yeah, because of pandemic. But, but, but at a time when, and I'll use this analogy. Okay. Skin you hop. Oh, my, I'm no papa. I see a skin you hop. Okay. Wasagari alone case you have one waka crazy. Now, Ube Fikro Mab or Nube Fikro Mabano, I top a pie ash and a mutu Mabana or the Abyssi way. That is the sentiment you get from people that the size of the government is big. Um, we're not cutting waste in certain areas, and yet we're being asked to pay a little more because it's burden sharing. Uh, my, my brother, it's easier said than done. If you say we should cut waste, Give us the areas we should cut. Size of government has been cited as one. What is the size of government? The current um, estimate of what the government purse cost the Ghanaian, if I'm not mistaken, is comparatively larger than economies within this continent, Kenya and Nigeria to be precise, whose government budget, uh, if the executive government, uh, the uh, executive uh, budget. Uh, brother, alone, give me the figure. Not, let me give you the figure in a second. But so you are you you are not in agreement that the government is big. Give me the figure. All righty. So I let me just share this with you. Now these figures, uh, in comparison with the uh, budget controlled by the Kenyan uh, presidency, as compared to the control by okay. So Kenya's economy, and this is from the national budgets of each country. The Kenyan government um, GDP is at $480 billion. Uh, sorry, 107. Nigeria is at $480 billion. 
Ghana is at 770. 70 billion. 70 Our 70 billion. Yeah. Okay. It's the, it's the least in the three. But this is the money controlled by the presidency. $221 million by Kenya is the least. Nigeria has $387 million. Ghana, $470 million. This is records from our national budget. Now, uh, tell me the difference. 380 and 400 I can give you $20 million if that's what they want. But someone is spending... No, 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 no. And I'm saying and that I'll give you... I'll economy. give you the difference of the $20 million. If it will solve your irresponsible behavior, I can in Japan will give you twenty million. Who's irresponsible behavior? Ghanaians. They are very irresponsible. A lot of them. They don't want to work. They are solely dependent on government for a person, even part. Really? Of course. Yes. You think I'm afraid to speak the truth? No, I would like for you to speak the truth, but I would like for you to share. You know, you see, where 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 is the evidence that Ghanaians evidence. want to depend on Let government? Let me give so you evidence. This Saturday. I went to my site in Tema. Mm -hmm. On my way back, listen carefully. A woman has hired Uber following my car. I got to a place to buy coconut. I could have chosen to go and buy cheese and beggar as we're speaking. But I, who pays workers, stopped to buy coconut to drink. Mm -hmm. It's my choice. This woman has hired a Uber following me. When I got out of the car to ask the seller, coconut seller, to give me the coconut, a woman comes out of the car. I'm saying, Madam, what is the problem? Uh, I had an accident about seven months ago. Excuse me. What makes you think at that particular point that I'm standing there, I have money for you to go and do your surgery? That is what I mean by irresponsible behavior. They are so inconsiderate. The Guyanese make politicians corrupt because of their irresponsible behavior. Why do you give them money then? Yeah, if I give them money, some, some of them are genuine. Like, I pay school fees and hospital bills. But those coming to me, and I'm hungry. We are full. We are full. But, okay, so you, you, you do some philanthropy. Yes, uh, and others, and other, like kids who okay. have seven A's, five A's, three A's, I don't have a problem. You don't leave them behind. I pay. Genuine hospital bills, they come 52,000 Ghana CDs, this and that, hard condition, I pay. But people who come to me, they send me a message. Today, myself and my kids, we don't even have food to eat. You are lazy. Because if you know how my mother worked hard, she was selling on a small table at Okanshi to take care of me. What has happened to Ghanaian women, Ghanaian men today? That everything, politicians should do it for them. And let me say this clearly, emphatically, that anybody who depends on government for his survival will never survive. Well, he will I continue to be poor. At the moment, we're paying 700,000 people with 60% of all the revenue we generate in this country. I don't know, as a businessman, if that makes business sense. You see, you're paying 700,000 people. And the 700,000 people are all ministers. I'm not talking about ministers. Yeah, so what is your problem? The problem is that what the is your problem? sector... No, the, 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 yeah, the, no, there's, no, there's, no. What's your problem? The, is the person working for a Kufuado or he's working for the country? The question you is be blessed that you have seven hundred thousand people working. Really? Of course, yes. But we're paying them with sixty percent of what we're generating. That is the situation so, we so, find ourselves so, in. So now, how do we now. make the pie bigger so that now we're paying with, with that sixty percent that we pay them? And, and mind you, the sixty percent are people. Some of them are going on strike. Some of them say it's not enough. Right? You see, you are making contradictory no, references. No, there's no contradictory here. references even at all. the big part, no. the, the 60 percent. But the, still the going point I'm trying to make is that how do we make the size of the pie? How do we make this economy big enough to be able to pay the 700,000 people and be able to... Very and, easy. and you think the E-Levy is how we do yes, that? Yes, it's one of them. 
creating employment is also one of them. How much of the Let employment have we uh, created? Uh, uh, how many hours do you have today? <laughs> I will go we're, all out with We're you. here till 10 o'clock <laughs> this morning. I'll go all out with you. Uh, My brother, yes. let me tell you something. If you want to develop this country and expand uh, you know, the workforce, yeah. you know, create jobs for them, there are simple, simple things. All governments, all governments, and I say all government, NDC, MPP, they all missed out. Okay. First one. No, hold on a second. In the spirit of responsibility, don't forget, please. If you have to write it down, please write it down. We have bills to pay. We're going to take a short commercial break. We'll come okay. back and we're going to uh, continue our conversation with uh, Mr. Kennedy Oine of Japan. He's the MP for Asin Central and he's about to uh, download some nuggets on some of the things that governments have missed on how we can turn the economy around. Stay with us. This is the Sassy Breakfast Show. The maritime sector is important to the growth of the economy. At the Ghana Shippers Authority, our aim is to ensure that we provide the best of service and support to importers and exporters all across the country by organizing seminars on new policies, how to avoid demurrage, resolving complaints at entry borders, negotiating port charges, and promoting the transit trade. So whether you are importing or exporting, we are ready to assist you at no cost. Visit us at Ghana Shippers Houses, Ridge Accra, GPHA Towers, Tema, NCA Building behind Fort Gardens, Kumasi, Takrade Shippers Center, Takrade, and Yamusa Building, Kumbihini, Tamale. We also have complaints units at the Elugu, Paga, Afiao Borders, and the Kotoka International Airport, and Takotel, Takrade. Call us on 0302-666-915 or toll free on 0800-300-55 or visit our website www.shippers.org.gh. Ghana Shippers Authority, providing shipping solutions. Whether you're the most uptight girl or the slayest of all queens, got your nose up in the air, shy, or the I don't care kind of girl, our personalities may differ, but, but, but our wahala and our issues are similar, and we need to talk. We need a place and time for just us, talking from girly to womanly stuff. Welcome to our safe haven, our zone, our spot, just us, where we talk about Everything from love and sex to business and wealth, fashion and cosmetics, cosmetic surgeries and old, the boys. My name is Na Ashakor and I invite you to join my girls and I every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on Asasi Radio. The voice of our land. We're going back to love. We're going back to love. We're going back to love this Valentine on the cruise of the land. Join us on a chocolate journey with Asasi Radio through the 28 days of February. Take this cruise of the land on the Asasi Breakfast Show with Kweku Insura Ado. Hi, I'm Kweku Insura Ado, host of the Asasi Breakfast Show, and I present you a lifetime opportunity to take a chocolate journey back to love on the cruise of the land. A real-life ocean cruise with your partner to see the majestic Aegean Sea with stops in Santorini and Heraklion in Greece and Kusadasi in Turkey, along with other iconic and historical locations, courtesy our partners, the cruise people. Stay tuned in to the Assassin Breakfast Show for this and many more special treats this chocolate month. You can surely get the love back the family way with Nashoko on between hours. It's Nashoko on between hours. Oh, hey, I'm Nashoko. Get your partner aboard the chocolate journey. Let's explore how well you know each other. It's knowing me, knowing you. The best couple wins amazing prizes throughout the month of February. It's love between hours. And you're gonna get so loved up on the Cafe 995 with Caroline. Cafe 995. Hi, I'm Caroline host of Cafe 995 and I am going to make sure you win back the heart of your loved one on a three-way call with me, you and your partner. Can you duet on a song together? Daily prizes are at stake, so get ready. Or take a drive on the 995 Rush Hour and prove that you're the boss of all love songs. 995 Rush Hour. When you hear it, you know it. Identify it and win big. You can also win spectacular prizes and giveaways these Valentine's on the Lifestyle ABC with Jack Yankra. Nitro Avenue with Black Boy. The Sunday Brunch with Jandal. ALJ with Solomon Tay. On the African Playlist with Keely. And feel the beauty of chocolate dipped in 
love on the chocolate playlist. Weekdays at 10 p.m. It's the Asasi Chocolate Journey on the cruise of the land. Back to love. Back to love. KCV. I like this. Stonewall. Miriam. Weaver. Ghana no be Jamaica. Fire burn the enemy, oh. Now I'm making the paper. Oh, John Shoe Babylon, fool. Oh, the young person, I owe you. Pay for bad, they wonder. Every day, many as it is, I is a holiday. We they do up every day, where they insane. Hey, I'm a master. Master. Who be a master? Master. 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 Pay for a crowd, master. Master. Kennedy, Japan, one master. 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 You see the difference, we say I am born to lead where well, you, you are born to follow. I be mafia, ya run zongo, me ya they do, they they follow. Pepe them be the shit up, they be a for as a mu as a fuint up. I'm a mabu mabu way. Are you my ko ye kuo, my love and no kata fio abba chico. I'm a mabu mabu way. Why you that disrespect to your master? When you forgive respect, hey. disobey, you go for all his debt. You for the year award and keep in check. We are Zimobia on a master. Master. Who be on a master? Master. They four crowd master. Master. Then they did a pong or master. Master. They are master. You are a sugar. They are a master. They are a master. They are a master. For master, the gun of yeah. Trinidad. Yeah, master. When I'm an amateur, I'm going rather be Monday. Secretary General Crow, master, not Bill Gates. I show me say, I'm going to hit you by a hot cake. I dream bonnie, I'm going convex. I'm going a concave. Move. Yeah, so we keep a dream bonnie, I'm going to show us a pepe. I'm going to come back home and come to Toronto, then take. I'm going to come back home and fit a session at your manche. I can't baby, a papa, a jig, a denche. And you know, I'm going to come back home and come back home. All right, it's uh, 41 minutes past uh, nine, and uh, we're all going all the way to 10 this morning, and we're talking to the MP for Asin Central, Mr. Kennedy Ohine Ejapong. We've been having a very, very uh, engaging conversation, and he's about to uh, drop some uh, serious nuggets on some of the things that he feels we could be turning to what i would like to call the lowest hanging fruits but in the meantime goyle has good news for you and they're rewarding uh, prepaying go card customers with two pesos per liter on fuel uh, you can also enjoy discounts on lubricants at goal stations nationwide elevate your goodness by joining the goal Gold club today and enjoy up to three pesos per liter discount on falls and you also get amazing discounts on lubricants as well as free life insurance cover provided by my life insurance a crew contributes uh, all your loyalty points to a social group to fund an approved csr project and above all enjoy exclusive gold branded campaign gifts you're asking how to join well you have to go to a gold station or an office around the country nationwide or you can go to the website registration.gold.com.gh and all their social media handles whoever you are long as you're in this country you can join the gold club now goil good energy yeah yeah dim Right, and uh, the Ghana Beauty Awards Best Spa and Center winner, Janem Salon and Spa, uh, is a one-stop shop for all your salon and spa services uh, this month and every day for both men and women. Janem is located in a serene and plush environment in Jowulu. Uh, with excellent customer service and they have professional therapies who will take care of your needs from facials to massages body scrubs waxing sauna and jacuzzi uh, they also have hairstylists and barbers who specialize in african and caucasian hair care with uh, services including hair treatment uh, coloring cuts blow dry and braids complete your look with a pampering manicure and pedicure Talk to Janem today. They're looking forward to pampering you. And the number is uh, 
So we have uh, 16 minutes before we get to the top of the hour. And uh, uh, just before we went for the break, uh, Mr. Javon was mentioning that there are things that he thinks that governments, low-hanging fruits, that governments, he's not saying this particular government, all governments all government. have missed out on. Yes. So, Mipacho, I have my notebook. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready to list the things. Yeah. What, what do you think are the lowest hanging fruits that we've turned a blind yes. eye to? If we want to develop this country, we should stop relying on cocoa, gold, and minerals, or whatever we claim. Tourism is the way to move this country. Really? I'm, 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 I'm wondering. I mean, over the years, we have uh, had situations where... Um, I mean, the tourism sector has made a certain decent amount of contribution. Uh, but if you say tourism is the way to go, is that because um, we're not getting enough value out of it? What is it that's missing? What's the ingredient? Uh, President Pekufuadu has taught me something. That if you focus or dream or believe in something and you put in the effort, you can do it. That is free SHS. If they will listen to me, all governments have failed because they downplay tourism in this country. Go to Ministry of Tourism and Authority, Tourist Authority or whatever, and Ghana check. To Ghana Tourist Authority. Yeah, and check the number of tourist sites. The Paga Crocodile Pond, Elimina Castle, Cape Coast Castle. Look at the beach. Seven or oh, six hundred and eighty kilometers stretch, mm -hmm. all the way to Afro, from Enzema to Afro. What are we doing now? If I'm president today, first from Independence Square to Kwame Nkrumah Museum, mm -hmm. high rise, clean beach. I will not allow anybody. You go there and you see people easing themselves. You'll be lashed. Because if you go to Dubai, mm -hmm. Marina, they don't have this. It was a man-made, created. Mm -hmm. And look at the high rises they have over there. And boats, you go there and rent it. We can do the same here. And we have the natural... Yes. See, look, I was in Pram Pram this Saturday to buy a land. If nobody believes in me, I, I acquire six acres. I want one more to make seven. You see what I'm going to do. Because I've said it several times. Now, look, me, if you give Elimina and Cape Coast Castle to me, you'll see the money I'm going to make out of it. I'll give you an example. You see, the tunnel that you go through all the way to the sea, mm -hmm. I'll call it point of no return. I'll put a vessels, lined up ships, with restaurants, live band, everything there. When you buy the ticket that we are going to Cape Coast Castle or Elimina Castle, it's a package. What they have to do is, you know, some people have this phobia, you know, they, so we have to take pictures of the original and put it there. Then you expand the tunnel for people to feel free and walk through it. When they walk, they go straight into the vessel or the ship mm -hmm. with live band, everything. Your seats depends on the ticket you bought, the amount. The live band and the vessel will take you all the way to Shama or Takrade and back. And because we said point of no return, you will not come back to the same entrance. You will go through another side. And for Cape Coast to make money, it's simple. When you go to Cape Coast Castle, between the Cape Coast Castle and their park that President Kufu built. Yeah, the Jubilee Park. Yeah, in between there, you put a hotel. What, what do you see there? They smoke weed and they ease themselves over there. You'll be lashed. I take it from me. If I'm president today, and you go and smoke Rifa over there, who arrest you, you go in for minimum one month. If you go and ease yourself, we'll lash you well, well. 
we put affordable hotels there. I use the word affordable. Ghanaian hotels are too expensive with so many taxes. Isn't it because of the economies of scale? Economies of scale. Let me tell you something. EPA, one, 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 all these taxes. What, 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 what is EPA doing for tourism? Environment. Environmental Please, protection. Give me a break. I will slash all those taxes so that hotel prices will be affordable. That will attract influx of tourists to come in. When they come and the thing is too expensive, they don't come back again. But before you do this, construction of roads will come in, developing the tourist sites will come in. And when construction is going on, employment is being created or expanded. The way Ghanaian workers at a restaurant frown their faces and I, we need to teach them. Smile on your teeth. Show it. This is the way we have to move this country. Tourism. Your hotels. Mm. They have to check if it's filthy. Roaches. We shut it down. We have to be firm. Now people, when anybody who makes money straight to Dubai, why? Let me tell you. Abu Dhabi has oil. The same sea. Where Dubai is, there's no oil. But you see how they've used tourism to develop Dubai. You can't compare Abu Dhabi with all the money to Dubai. So if we want to move this country, the amount of money tourism can bring. Look, typical example is when President Kufuadu said what? The diasporians and whatever. What was it? The year of return. The year of return. That they can come? Yes. Over two billion came into this country. Well, the global, um, uh, what do you call it, 2020, global GDP for tourism alone was uh, $4.67 trillion. You see? What is the that portion was, That was for just when the COVID what, was... What is beginning. the portion for it Ghanaians? So we can cut a big slice of this. Case closed. Unfortunately, we are, look, when you go to Paga, my brother, crocodile, you see these young kids sitting on crocodile. I'm scared. Me too. When I was going to Laura, elephants were crossing the road. You need to wire the whole place about 40, 60 kilometers and put these animals in. Do you know how much Kenya is making? Do you know how much Botswana is making? Are they different from us? They are not. But because it is not our priority, we overlook things. Uh, when you go to uh, BA in Kransa, they, they have monkey sanctuary or whatever. We've got quite a few of the monkey sanctuaries around. We have Shah Hills. Yeah. You see them. In but fact, in terms of uh, game reserves, we have nine across the country. Good. And if we develop all these, you see the number of people that will come in. So the way to go to so make you, money, it's tourism. Ah, uh, it's tourism. I'm telling you. Would you like to be president? No. But I'm not. No, that. I'm only asking. I'm, no. I mean, is, is I, it something that's ever I, crossed your mind? I, I want to be a business. A lot of people are coming to me saying that you have to contest. But, but you, 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 Kennedy, or Henry Japan, my, has it ever crossed dream, your mind? My dream and my vision is to at least have 50,000 workers in this country. So, I, so far, I have only seven. There's another 43. Yeah. Until that, have a you, long way to until go. that you won't consider no, trying it. to be president. No. But not that I'm afraid. I can be president in style. Mm -hmm. Yesterday they asked me, if you are president, what will you do in 100 days? 100 days is just discipline. 100 days. I will not promise you I'll build mansions, build this. 100 days is discipline. How will you achieve that? What, 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 what kind of, when you say discipline, timekeeping, cleanliness... Yes. Time. 
But you've been talking about lashing people. Wouldn't you be infringing on constitutional rights? Ah, when you go and ease yourself over there, you have a right. You go and ease yourself at the beachfront, you have a right. My brother, we have to instill discipline. Mm. These are some of the things. You see, radio stations, I heard him saying that he left here one year and he's back. There's so called 700,000 people. Mm -hmm. 9 a.m. I will not blame the junior officers. I went to one ministry on Thursday. Mm -hmm. I went to about six directors and ministers' office. Nobody was there. At 9 a.m.? Yes. With exception now of... Now you the, understand why people complain that we're paying people and not getting commensurate. I, will, I can answer to that. With the exception of the finance director who was there. Nobody. Why is it that... Six o'clock, seven o'clock, we are at post. What it means is that government business, people don't take it seriously. So my discipline, if you are a minister, mm -hmm. I will not tell you I'm coming to your ministry. By 8.30, I'm there. If you are not there, you don't have any tangible reason. <laughs> you are fired. So if I'm able to fire a minister, it will trickle down to the ordinary people who are late. Time is money. Under the Kufo administration, um, I think it was Papa Kwesim Dumu was running the ministry for, uh, what was it called again? The private sector? No, 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 no. It was supposed to achieve Energy. that. It was reforms, public, public yeah. sector reforms. Yes. Right. You see, I don't believe in theories. I believe in practical action. I will not inform you. I'll be there. And you see, the disadvantage will be for all those who are saying that Canada Japan you should be president. The way they think, they'll be the first group I will arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've what have it. they done? Well, uh, why no, will you have... <laughs> no, when, you, when you come, Yadidi, I'm saying, oh, okay. The moment he says Yadidi, he's going to be corrupt. I will arrest you. <laughs> yes. You're going to arrest someone for... For, for having dreams of a better life just because you're president. Uh, the word is not a better life. Greed is the word. Mm. You see, so when we have discipline in 100 days, uh, Ghanaians will abide by, look, what Henry Corte did. Now his own guy people are threatening him, so he's giving up. Me, I told him, my brother, make your name. But he's scared. A thick, tall guy like that. He's scared. Some, his own gun. I, I keep telling Ghanaians that blacks, we are naturally bombarded. His own gun. Some of the gun people are saying that he's becoming too popular. They have a problem with that. Wow. What kind of human beings are we? Is he doing a job? And is that job in the interest of the people? Yeah. I want to see a same man that will say that you have arrested my son, so I will jail you too. Mm. You know, if we don't inculcate discipline in Ghanaian workers, as you're saying, that is why we don't get anything from the 700,000 government workers. If there's discipline, we are all on time. My brother, a guy kept my document for about five months in the ministry when I was away. I went back to trace it. They couldn't find it. And a young boy... Young boy has kept the thing under his decks. My luck was that I had a copy. Every document I take to the ministry, I make sure I make copies. Mm. If not this boy, I just kept it. Ask him if you can do that at Kensi. I'll give you a slap right there. Do you slap your workers? No. But they know <laughs> that you make them silly mistake. You definitely get it. And so they are up. Right. Yeah, he kept the thing for five months. All right. See, so this, this is why people are complaining that all this money you are going to collect is like you are taking a basket to the riverside. Mm. They will leak. It is because there's no discipline. So you think the size of the public. You know, the problem I have with my own president is that I can a Japan believed in him because I thought, Charlie, 
he's tough. And now he's too gentle for my liking. What would you want him to be doing differently? Ah, we voted for President Ekufuad because he's an action man. You're not seeing enough and action? No. Now he's so gentle. When you go the way, oh, can he? You take your task. Ah, Jesus Christ. You can fire these people, you know? <laughs> but he's got probably his age. It comes with age. The same way you were expecting me on January 6th. No, I didn't expect you. I observed <laughs> you sitting <laughs> quietly. React. I observed <laughs> you sitting quietly. I was and quiet. I, no, no. I didn't have an expectation of you, to be honest. I just observed you sitting quietly. And so I wanted to find out. Because you have the MPP at heart. And everybody who got up and got into the, the scuffle said, we're doing it for the party. Yeah. Mm, but so but as age, age as age comes, yes. uh, you change your no, style. I wouldn't blame the president. You know, he's calm. He's calm of age, everything. And, you know. But they are punishing him. But for, you're 62 now, right? Punishing, you will be 62. They are punishing year. President Akufuadu for Kumbreko. <laughs> That's what the NDC is also doing. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> when you talk about Kumbreko, it brings back, you know, the the memory of the amendments made to the VAT itself. Yeah. You know, Kumi Preku was about... Uh, we're in similar times. You could say that history is repeating itself. Right. That's it was the introduction of the VAT. Um, but for some very interesting re reasons. That's the party cool. that, that That's decided, say, Kumi Preku no a VAT MP Yintia. But we are, we are enjoying it. Uh, but you also came in and under an MPP government increased the... That's why I'm saying that we are enjoying it. So whatever we are doing, NDC will come and enjoy it. <laughs> we will increase it. <laughs> it is for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, we're uh, having a conversation with uh, Mr. Kennedy Ohini Ejapong. He's the MP for Asin Central. Um, and uh, also the chairperson of the parliamentary... Uh, committee on uh, um, security, uh, defense, defense, defense and security, right? Defense and interior. And interior, defense and interior. I, um, and, um, for those of you tuned in to Asasi Radio in Accra on 99.5, uh, we've been giving a little extension to the show. Uh, so Caroline Samson will be coming your way with Cafe 995. Uh, not at the time you expected it, nor the news. Um, and uh, all programming on the Assassi uh, um, affiliates uh, will resume, and you know, we'll go back to normal uh, programming shortly. I saw a tweet somewhere, I think it was yesterday, uh, being attributed to uh, Mr. Yabu Abinga Asama, that uh, you essentially are taking issues and matters from the household into the public. Where? Uh, this tweet was actually a quoted tweet from uh, Kafui Day, uh, quoting Mr. Boabinga Samwa, saying that um, you should essentially, okay, so these are the exact words, Canada Japan should be disciplined. I don't think he's in a position to tell the world what we are discussing indoors. And this is uh, Director of Communications of the MPP, uh, speaking on comments that you had made about uh, the Ajasafu uh, situation. Um, do you think that your utterances that, that should guy be... guy should be fired. It's a waste to the party. No, you see, I've had a nice conversation with you, but if you bring it up... Please, out, please stay nice. But, but I mean, do you it's think a waste. that... I'm, whatever, is a waste to the party. He is a waste to the party. I've told you everything that is going on. What role has he played? The problems we are facing in MPP with communication, is because of his arrogance. He lost because of his arrogance at Domi, uh, uh, Adenta. And now he's coming out with a tweet. Please. He actually said this uh, this morning on, uh, apparently this morning, on GTV. Hey, you will see the demonstration I'm going to make against him. You see what is happening in the party because they don't want the truth. Now they are taking some people out and demonstrations, fighting, all going on everywhere because of this election. These people a breed like Yabu Abnya Samoa. That's the problem. What is Yabu Abnya Samoa's contribution in the party? I want to know Yabu Abnya Samoa. 
What is his contribution? I'd like you to make me a promise. Uh, you know, it is because of Yabua Bia Samoa. If John Boadu from my hometown doesn't take time, he's going to lose. Because he did that to bring that jerk as communication director. Okay. He brought Yabua. He's a jerk. Who the hell you think he is? Yabua Bia Samoa is a jerk. And I tell you, he's a waste in the party. What is he doing for the party? Is it not this same Yabua Bia Samoa who came to my house in East Legon? And back like a kid. You are not so. Uh, too early in the day. I didn't. I, I thought you Look, said. No, no, my no, brother, no, no, we've no, had, no. No, no, no. What is going nice on in the party? We don't need jacks like that. Who the hell do you think he is? A communicator? A failed lawyer? Are you out of your mind? Please. How how can we. How how can. When we have idiots like Yabuabi Asamoah and the truth is not told, we we'll lose. Look so, at what so, is happening. So you, so you think that? Look uh, at what is happening in the party now. Even even common common uh, uh, grassroots election. Look at what is happening in the party because they don't speak the truth. They don't speak the truth. How can how can as a member of the MPP how can the party revisit the uh, values of uh, truth speaking? You see, Oman, I'm coming. Oman FM complained. Ken City they complained. The guy was insulting me during the election and everything. I didn't say anything. But if he starts uh, fooling, you will see what I'll do to him. You, you failed. Because of his arrogance. When people are advising him, talk to your, go down to your constituency. Are you the only lawyer in this country? Foolish. Think we are scared of him. Now, at the end with him, he's a failed lawyer. He hasn't succeeded in life. How do you bring this idiot as a communicator? Uh, Please. Uh, Ms. Ms. You think we are stupid in the party? And what is his contribution? He doesn't pay a dime. We are paying. I gave you an example. That for me now, I paid one million. A fool like you. Have you paid even 100,000 cities to the party? No. I, 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 I think that just as you, you said that you would like to see the party do well. Uh, you'd like to see governments do well. I'd like now to Now, hear... anybody should challenge me. I'll say more about what Ajua has done to the party. If this is how they're going to go about it, I'll say more. What do you mean? I know you have a way of mine. He's a jerk in the party. I know what good communication. A failed lawyer. Come and talk trash. He insulted me. He disrespected me during the election. I didn't mind him. That you shouldn't try. But, but I mean, you came to my house at East Legon begging for common t shirt. An idiot like you. Who are you? It's only MPP that will lie, allow idiots like you, Yabuapnya Samwa, to be a communicator. A failed lawyer like you. Have you ever given me a t shirt? I have. Have you? What do you mean? What is your contribution in MPP? Now, John Boadu will lose the election because of this idiot. I swear to God. You will see. But what would... What, what, if, 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 if you... If you I don't know, orchestrated. John Boadu orchestrated for this idiot to be our communication director. If, if, if um, you had the foretelling of the current situation in Parliament, uh, you weren't listened to. Um, you seem to... Uh, talking about something that has a... You know... F into the future of the party. What, what, is it? what, what do you think will be needed to be done by the New Patriotic Party to ensure that there's better harmony and the internal politics? Look, my brother, they should stop Alan Baumia and let everybody who decides to contest, to contest. Mm. If they want peace, if they don't want division in the party, they should stop Alan, they should stop Baumia and let everybody contest. The people, what they want, give it to them. And there'll be no skirt and blouse. Look at the fight all over. Why? Because of dishonesty in the party. Some are taking forms. I have, I have a recording here, audio, I don't want to play it. People are complaining. I'm not going to play because they don't have the facts. It's speculation. Mm -hmm. But there is element of truth. You're trying to skew the thing to one presidential candidate. It's wrong. It's very, very wrong. 
So when you skew it and eliminate people from it, how do you go back and convince them to come back to the party? That is the problem we had with this skirt and blouse. Yeah, that is the problem we had with this skirt and blouse. So have we gone too far They've right not or left? Their lesson. Of... I mean, one, not. once upon a time, there were 17 candidates. Yeah. And we said, oh, too many people. Have we taken the too many people thing a little too seriously? Where now we're narrowing the field and... Well, if you have 20 people, they will go, the party will decide and reduce it to be about four or five. Then allow them to contest. So that has been resolved. But can, can your party actually... I mean, this is the party that's currently in administration pushing a digital agenda. Forms. Can't it be online so everybody who wants it can go and download? How much, how much work does it take? Don't to do mind that? them. They don't want the truth. We'll leave it for them to do whatever they do. And we'll lose the election. Yeah, we'll lose the election. When we have idiot like Yabuabia Samoa, who doesn't want the truth the, to be told? Please, the, the jerk. I, 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 now, I, who can you compare yourself to me? Your lawyer at my foot. Mr. Jepo. You know how many lawyers... I, 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 know, I, know, I know you're very you know, incensed he's, he's by, by the me. statement. What do you mean? But <coughs> I, I would urge you to... Um, no, 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 no. You, know, Look, you see, I've been, I've been very, very quiet. But and I, I was enjoying the conversation. Yeah, I don't now, want anybody you've... to disrespect me. What, does he, what is his contribution in the party? Foolish boy like you. But if, you he, has a, if, he, if he doesn't he have... He insulted me in December and everything. I didn't mind him. He sarcastically disrespects me to people. That's why he lost. Got the people. I'm the man of the people. And this time, I decided not to go there. So, okay, do your own thing. You've lost. Because of your arrogance. He thinks he's better than everybody. Are you the only lawyer in MPP party? You're a jerk. They should rise up. Do, MPP do people think, should rise up you, against idiots like that in the party. But do you think that the Please. national executives are administering the party? They all lose. I, I quite annoy me. I, I said I was not going to open my mouth. I'll make sure they all lose. A, a new breed. A new breed. I swear to God. I said I was not going to do it. But because of the Abu Abiyan Sabwa, you see what will happen in the party. How, how I, is I that am going, going to round. I will go around. How, how would that change the fortunes of the new patriotic party? Yeah, because if you have dishonest people there who will always go to to Yabu Samoa, you lose the election. So we we'll eliminate all of them. I eliminate all of them. And then we say party for Munti MBA. Ah, Mufisi and Kwasiyama. Now what is their contribution? They only go and collect money and chop chop. We bring the money. What kind of nonsense is going on in this party? Please. We bring the money. Mokwarama kodi dinamo sisi adamo to top fake watches. Crazy people. Um, I I think uh, at this point I'm just going to uh, force a short break. I think Mr. Japon needs to drink a bit of tea. But uh, I do apologize uh, for uh, some of the choice of words. Uh, if you're, you know, to no, 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 we have to. We, no, no, no. no. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think that. Uh, all right, we're, we're taking the short musical break. We'll be right. Back. Stan, this is the extended uh, Asasi Breakfast Show, and uh, we're in the studio with uh, the MP for Asin Central, uh, Mr. Kennedy Ohini Ejapong. Uh, and we took this uh, short break, uh, but we're back. And uh, we're going to uh, wrap up our conversation with one final uh, chat about the economy. Um, you know, it seems uh, a question of mine touched a raw nerve and um, created, uh, you know, some heat. And we apologize um, for any choice of words, any choice of words um, in, in, in the expression that uh, Mr. Japan had made. Um, but uh, we're going to focus on the economy. Political party, uh, no, 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 no. He's not said... Yeah, I, that's what he's saying. No, no, no. Yeah, political party, Ghana. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Yeah, and prove something to those people. Let's talk about the economy. 
Uh, how can we get this economy on this on a sound footing? Now, how do you? I mean, you have you have, you have idiot like Yabu Abiyan. He's, he's, he's not running the the. He's not he's not in government. He's not in government. I disrespect him any time. Who are you? Who are you? How many workers does he pay in this country? Yabu Abiyan. And because of political party, there be our person who disrespect him. Dumbuadu will lose this election. He brought that idiot. I will punish him for that. Or free me crumb pussy. But you see what will happen to John Bowen. I swear to God. Every executive, because there's when you go to party headquarters, there's nobody there. Grassroots will listen to me. There's nobody at party headquarters to listen to their grievances. A fool, yeah, boy, yeah, Zamwa. We meet in Ben, you are called to get at you. We are involved. Mr. Jepon, I mean, you, you, you. Twice in college, you made the who's who in economics. Is your party not leaning enough on your expertise? Well, I don't know. But when you have people like this guy. Why? You, you Wait, see, but the yeah, person have, is not, but the person like is not in, in government. He's, I say he works them, at the party office. I say to them and they don't take it because, oh, can I Japan? He talks too much in it. But I'm a successful man. Ha have you extended any yes. support them, to, to the Minister work. of, of, of Finance? It's a classroom work. It's not classroom work. Anytime they have a problem, then they will come and call Kanye Japan. When have they called Yabu Abiyan Samoa? When there's a problem? Because you don't have the brains. You're a jerk. Okay. Uh, Mr. Japan. I think we should we we, yeah, we we should end our conversation at this point. I mean, it's it's been an all round uh, great time with you. Um, any final words before you leave us? Yeah, uh, because of your I mean, In fact, no. I'm, I I, I'm, I I have I have a question I before form, before your I'm final. I'm from word. a political party, and we'll see what will happen. What kind of nonsense? Are you is that? serious about this? Ah, but who, who underestimate me? Some, uh, no, I'm not underestimating you, but are, are you serious no, about what you're saying? That yeah. you are considering? Yeah, to what? If all the executives, the current executives, if they don't lose, I'll form a political party. All the current executives, including Yabu Abiyah Samoa, if they don't vote them out, I'll form a political party. To what end? To what end? Abro. And the name of the political party will be Abro. Who are you? All right. All right. Mr. Japan, uh, your final words. I don't have anything to say. Okay. Well, we appreciate your time on this Assy Breakfast Show. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, we wish you well. KCV. I like this. Stonewall. Area. Weaver. Midnight. Get down and no be Jamaica. Fire burn the enemy. Oh, now I'm making the paper. Oh, John Shoe Babylon fool. Only young guys who are there. Oh yeah. Very full by the under. Every day me need to say it's a holiday. We they do up every day where they they insane. Yeah. 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 Obi a one master, master. Obi a one master, master. They fool a crowd master, master. Then they do Japan one master, master. Me a one master. If you a shamati you lose again. Me a one master.